Hi, Mystery Recaft here. Today, I'm going to explain an American science fiction action film called John Carter. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie starts on a strange planet called Barsoom. The planet consists of three major kingdoms called the Helium, the Zodanga, and the Tharks. Helium and Zodanga have been at war for centuries. In the beginning of the movie, we see the army of Helium in blue capes battling the army of Zodanga in red capes. The general of Zodanga, named Sab Than, is approached by three men who claim to be messengers of God called Thern. The Thern's leader, Matai Shang, gives him a mysterious blue weapon and tells him that he has been chosen by the goddess to receive it. The Thurns have decided to help Zodanga in the war. They possess the control over a mysterious blue light called the Ninth Ray, which makes them stronger than other living creatures on Barsoom. We cut to New York City in 1881. A man named Edgar is summoned by his uncle named John Carter to New York City. When Edgar drops at the station, he is greeted by John's butler, who takes him to John's estate. As it turns out, John is a wealthy man and a former Confederate Army captain. John's lawyer sadly informs Edgar of John's sudden death. John has left all of his vast wealth to Edgar. The lawyer then takes a surprised Edgar to John's mausoleum, where his body is being preserved. But strangely, the door of the mausoleum only opens from the inside. Later, the lawyer hands Edgar a personal diary of John, which John wanted only Edgar to read. When the lawyer leaves, he begins to read it. It begins by mentioning that Edgar was the only one who believed John's wild stories when he was little, so it only feels right to tell this story to Edgar. The story starts in Arizona after the Civil War. John Carter is a former captain in the Confederate Army who currently looks for gold in caves. Powell is a Union colonel who wants John to help his U.S. cavalry soldiers against the Apache, so he abducts him and tries drafting him as a soldier. However, John doesn't want to fight as a soldier anymore. After several failed attempts of running away, he manages to escape by knocking a guard out and stealing the colonel's horse. The colonel and his men pursue him. Not far away, they come across a mounted Apache warband. The colonel and the men get into a shootout with the people. John tries running away amidst the chaos, but the colonel gets injured in the fight. He helps the colonel out of pity and brings him to a nearby cave. The cave is new to John, as he has never come here in search of gold. He goes inside, lights a match, and is beyond surprised to see lots of gold embedded on the roof of the cave. However, just then, a man behind him appears out of nowhere. The man is one of the therns we saw in the beginning of the movie. The colonel alerts John, who gets into a fight with the strange man. He shoots the man, making him fall to the ground. When John goes near him, he hears the man say Barsoom while looking at a strange medallion in his hands. John picks up the medallion and repeats the word Barsoom. Suddenly, a bright blue light flashes out of the locket. When John opens his eyes again, he is in a strange desert. He gets up and tries walking, but falls in every step. It seems as though he can float in midair. Confused, he practices walking in the new environment. As he walks, he reaches a hill nearby where he sees several eggs hatching. Just then, a large group of green creatures with six limbs appear riding on massive animals. The leader attacks him, making John take a huge leap. The rest start firing at John, but stop when their leader asks them to. The creature speaks in a different language and introduces himself as Tas Tarkas. John introduces himself as John Carter from Virginia, but the creatures decipher that his name is Virginia. Tarkas asks John to jump as he did before, but he denies and attacks him. The creatures injure John and hold him hostage. As they talk, we get to know that their kind is called Tharks. Elsewhere on the same planet, the princess of the city of Helium, Deja, practices presenting a weapon she has designed to her father, the king of Helium. Helium is at war with another city called the Zodanga and is about to lose because of Thurns being on Zodanga's side. Deja has figured out the secret of the Ninth Ray used by the Zodanga to fight the war. However, when she shows her weapon to the king, a man secretly causes a malfunction, causing it to explode. The king of Zodanga, Sab Than, wants to marry Deja for the war to end, but she is extremely against it. If Sab Than marries her, he will be the prince of Helium and will have the power to rule all of Barsoom. Meanwhile, the Tharks take John to their city and put him with the newly born infants. At night, a female Thark named Sola feeds John a liquid, after which he can understand the language of the Tharks. The following day, the Tharks order John to jump high in front of everyone. John notices that the medallion is with Tarkas, and without it, he cannot go back home. Just then, two battleships appear in the sky. 
The Helium and the Zodanga are battling each other. The war is entertainment to the Tharks, who bet on who will win. We see Princess Deja fighting in the ships. She tries to control the ship, but falls off of it in the process. John, using his newfound jumping powers, saves the princess. The Tharks start cheering for John, who is now fighting the Zodanga's soldiers along with Deja. John manages to change the course of the fight, making the Helium win, but their ship crashes as well. Deja and John are with the Tharks. Tarkas is impressed by John's abilities and makes him his right-hand man. John is reluctant to the idea, but doesn't disagree. At night, Deja and John talk, and Deja reveals to John that they are on Mars, which is called Barsoom in their language. John is surprised and doesn't believe her. He tells her that he is from Earth. Deja finds that hard to believe, too. Because of his thicker bone density and the planet's low gravity, Carter has incredible strength and can leap high. Deja then takes him to the Tharks' temple, where no humans are allowed to go. She hopes that the temple has a way to know how people can travel through worlds as John did. The kind female Thark, Sola, follows along behind them, begging them to stop. Deja shows John the statue of the goddess Isis and reads some markings engraved in it. However, the three of them are soon arrested by the Tharks and sentenced to death for entering the temple. Tarkas asks everyone to leave him alone with the prisoners in the cell in order to cut John's hands off. When they are alone, he reveals that he is Sola's father and doesn't want them to die at the hands of the Tharks. He hands John his medallion and asks him to go to the river Is to solve the mystery of the goddess Isis and get back to his world. When the Tharks look into the room after some time, they see that Tarkas has betrayed them. Tarkas' enemy, Tal Haju, takes charge and declares himself the new leader. Then, we see John, Deja, and Sola heading for the River Is. Deja is leading the way. However, Sola tells John that she is leading them towards the city of Helium instead of the river. John confronts her about it, and it turns out that she was taking him to her city to use him as a soldier in the war. Disappointed, John asks Sola to lead the way and leaves the princess there. Deja insists that she only did it because she doesn't want to marry Sabthan. He asks her to accompany him to the river. With no other way out, she agrees. The three sail through the river of Is and reach a massive inverted pyramid. John and Deja go on top of it and see a strange blue energy forming on the ground. Deja realizes that this is the power of the Ninth Ray that she had made her weapon from. They also realize that Carter's appearance on Mars is likely due to the transmission of a copy of himself from Earth to Mars with the help of the Ninth Ray. Just then, an army of war hoons approaches, led by Matai Shang, the leader of the Therns. John bravely tells Deja and Sola to run away and fights the army of war hoons himself. The King of Helium sends his army to John's aid, who defeats the war hoons and saves them. They take an injured John to Helium. Deja reaches her home and meets her father. She is surprised to see the king of Zodanga, Sabthan, there. He has come with no weapon or soldiers to ask Deja to marry him and end the war. Deja doesn't have any other way to stop the war, so she reluctantly agrees to marry him. In the following scene, we see John resting in a chamber in a helium palace. A soldier appointed by Deja fetches him and secretly takes him to her chamber. Deja asks John to go back to his home using the medallion. When the guards enter her chamber, John disappears. Deja thinks that he went back to the Earth, but John is actually hiding from the soldiers. When they leave, he tries going outside, but is soon caught by Matai Shang. John is surprised by Matai Shang's ability to change into any creature around him. The whole city is preparing for the wedding of Sabthan and Deja. Matai Shang binds John to himself with the help of a technology developed by the Ninth Ray. John is unable to move his body to his will. Matai Shang seems to be controlling him with his wrist device. Matai Shang then reveals to him that Sabthan is planning to kill Deja and invade Helium after the marriage. The Thern took his side in the war because Sabthan was the easiest to manipulate. But Matai Shang's real aim is to rule all of Barsoom through Sabthan. Matai Shang is about to kill John when an alien dog John had befriended earlier comes to his rescue. It bites off Matai Shang's wrist device, letting John free. He hurries to a flying craft and flies away to stop Deja from marrying Sabthan. However, John doesn't know how to control the aircraft and crash lands near the Tharks' territory. They hold him captive with a beaten Tarkas. Tal Haju, who is now the leader of the Tharks, puts John and Tarkas with massive beasts called the White Apes. John somehow manages to capture the apes in front of the whole Thark population. He then invites Tal Haju to fight him and defeats him in one go. Everyone cheers for John, who is now the new leader of the Tharks. He then persuades them to help him fight the Zodanga. 
The army of Tharks and John make their way to Deja and Sabthan's wedding ceremony. John reaches there just in time to stop the wedding. Seeing him, Sabthan tries to kill Deja, but John stops him just in time. A war between the soldiers of the two cities erupts again. However, the Tharks are on the side of Helium now. The Zodanga soon loses, but Matai Shang manages to escape with John's medallion. John plans to live on Mars as Deja's husband, so he doesn't bother to look for the medallion. He and Deja get married, and the crowd cheers for them. He is now the Prince of Helium. The following morning, John and Deja are on a balcony. Deja leaves John outside and goes into the room when Matai Shang appears. John tries to fight him, but he manages to use the medallion to send John back to Earth. When John wakes up, he is covered in dust and his beard has grown long. He is in the same cave and looks toward Colonel Powell to see his remains, suggesting that a long time has passed on Earth while he was on Mars. He looks around for a medallion but doesn't find it. He has no way to go back. The gold embedded in the cave makes him wealthy. He knows that there are more medallions on Earth. He starts a mining corporation and searches for the medallion for the next 10 years until one day he finally finds one on a site. John is delighted, but he knows that the Therns have been keeping an eye on him all this time. His body on the Earth must be protected when he goes to Mars, because any harm on it will cause him to die on both planets. That is why his mausoleum only opens from the inside. He had orchestrated his death to return back to Mars. John writes in the diary that he wants Edgar to protect his mausoleum from the Therns in turn of the wealth. Edgar is in shock after reading the diary. He goes out to the mausoleum and tries opening it with a secret password, which turns out to be Ned, the name John called Edgar when he was a kid. As the doors to the mausoleum open, a thern approaches Edgar. He had been spying on Edgar, waiting to kill John. However, before he can harm Edgar, someone from behind knocks him out. Edgar is beyond surprised to see his uncle in front of him. John takes the thern's medallion. As it turns out, he had never found the medallion. All this, including his death, was faked to attract a Thern and acquire his medallion. John then asks Edgar to protect his mausoleum from now on and goes inside of it. He lies on the bed with the medallion and begins the chant that will take him back to Mars again. Barsoom. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.